to speak with us today. Uh, our next speaker um, is no, uh, no stranger to breaking glass ceilings. Um, please help me uh, welcome Senator Jean Shaheen from New Hampshire. Uh, and she, uh, just a few words, she's the first elected female governor of North Hampshire and the first woman elected as both a governor and U.S. Senator. Please, please be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have a lot to talk about this year, huh? And a lot to celebrate, um, despite the tragedy that's happening in Iran. And it's so nice to be here with my colleague, Senator Graham. As he said, we're working on a number of things with my former colleague, Senator Ayotte. Um, you know, in New Hampshire, we care a lot about what's happening in Iran, right, Ellie? Um, and we've gathered for a lot of years, but I think we have not in the past seen the kind of moment that we have today. And in Iran, the people are taking to the streets, as we all know, to demand basic human rights, fundamental freedoms that we believe in in the United States and that are really at risk around the world. Um, the people have defied state-sanctioned violence, decades of injustice, in order to make their voices heard. And the person, as we all know, who was at the center of this fight was Masa Amini, um, known to her friends as Gina. She was a young Kurdish woman with big dreams, with a bright future, and yet she died away from those who loved her in a detention facility controlled through state-sanctioned violence. But what's so amazing about this moment is that even in death, Masa Amini is not alone, because in her memory, scores of incredibly brave women, supported by men, have taken to the streets to protest the brutal regime. And they do this despite what we've seen are the consequences and the photos that are all around here show what the consequences are of um, their actions. But the women of Iran and people all over the world have rallied behind Masa Amini. They have a battle cry that has reverberated through the streets of Tehran and across Iran. Woman, life, freedom. Now, my Farsi is not good, I'm sure, but Jen Jian Azadi, is that close? Jen Jian Azadi. And across the world, people are discovering what those of us in this room have long known. The women of Iran are strong, they are ferocious, and they will not be silenced. So the world is watching, and we are standing in awe of what's happening in Iran. But it's not enough to be impressed by their bravery. We must also stand in lockstep with the people of Iran as they struggle to take back control of their lives and their freedoms. And so I wanted you to know that yesterday, in the Foreign Relations Committee, I'm, I'm the only woman who sits on the Foreign Relations Committee here in our Congress. We need to change that. But we passed a resolution commending the bravery, courage, and resolve of the women and men of Iran, demonstrating in more than 80 cities, risking their safety to speak out against the Iranian regime's human rights abuses. And I'm not going to read all of it because it's quite long. But there are some parts of it that I think you all will be interested in. It says, resolved that the Congress commends the bravery, courage, and resolve of the women and men of Iran who are participating in the current protests to defend their fundamental human rights, risking their safety to speak out against the human rights abuses committed by the Iranian regime. We condemn the brutal beating and death of Masa Amini 
and the violent suppression by the Iranian regime of women and men participating in the current demonstrations, including children. And we call for transparent accountability for all killings of protesters by Iranian security forces. We support internet freedom programs that circumvent the regime, including the Open Technology Fund, which provides support for B VPNs and other alternatives that can be used to bypass attempts by authoritarian governments to censor internet access during times of protest. And we encourage continued efforts by the Biden administration to respond to the protests, including the recent sanctioning of the Iranian morality police, and we encourage the Biden administration to immediately impose under existing authorities additional human rights sanctions on officials and entities responsible for the repression of the current protesters. That is the piece that I thought you would be most interested in. So thank you for all that you are doing here to continue to point out the repression that's happening in Iran, your continued support for restoring freedom uh, to the people of Iran, and for, for helping to make sure that the world is paying attention to what's happening now. Thank you all so much.